bits. It's something we all have. They are the inevitable byproduct of our hobby. Over the course of our hobby experience, we all end up with a little collection of them. We can either choose to keep them, kind of like how a leprechaun would and would protect this pot of gold, or we would just sell them off in eBay or similar web websites. But when we keep them, then we get a little bit creative with them. Now using bits can be a little bit of a hassle if you don't have them organized. I have only a few bits left because I was one of those people that would sell my bits. But one day I decided that maybe it was time for me to put these bits to a good use and maybe make a model entirely made out of my, you know, leftover bits. This will be my very first attempt at trying to make an entire model left from leftover bits. Usually I would do some kit bashing just to, you know, give a personal touch to my already collected army. And then my current army that I'm working on would be the Stormcast Eternals. I'm not one to follow the a cohesive color scheme. Actually my entire army is just a mixed match of colors I decided to paint. And I decided to do the same thing with this model. Just pick up pieces from everywhere, from every single faction that I owned and starting going at it. Now for me the what has always been important when I do my painting schemes is the story. Where do I picture this model coming from? What exactly it's this story as to why does it look this way? Why did that person pick those colors? Do they come from somewhere light, dark, grim darkness and stuff like that? So I decided to come up with a little story just like how I do with every single model and I'm pretty sure that every one of you does the same thing. So I decided to search in my little box and look for things that I liked. I searched in other places, in other books, not just Warhammer. I read Dune, I read some HP Lovecraft, and I also looked at even Warhammer 40k. But I also wanted to look at other places. I wanted to look at stories. I wanted to get inspired. I wanted to see where my mind could take me into getting some sort of inspiration as to how I was going to fit this little model together. And I stumbled upon a game called Biomutant. Now Biomutant is a fairly recent game that has had some mixed reviews online as I have seen. But the concept was interesting to me. It helped me a lot into figuring out what exactly and how exactly I want to tie the story of my model together. Because the game basically is about animals from the future that got mutated and now they enhance themselves by enhancing their weapons, their bodies, basically changing their bodies. So I thought about doing something as well, something like that. What about something that could implement pieces from other species into itself so it can look unique to its setting? So I started off by laying the groundwork as to how I wanted to pose my model. I got the pieces that I had chosen, which were a bottom half of a Stormcast Eternal that I had cut off for a previous kit bash that I had done, the body of Ark and the Black that was left over for when I did uh, my Neferata model, and the banner from one of the Orc boxes, which is going to be the head in this case, plus I picked up some leftovers of the Bastelodon, some of the spiky bits to make it into the back. The two hands from the orcs because I thought that would impose give it a bigger feel to it and I was actually going to turn one of the Bastelodon headpieces into a shield which is I thought it was pretty creative on my part. Now what I'm going to be placing on the back is going to be one of the ancient tree lords heads because um, I really got inspired by the 12 labors of Hercules if you haven't read about it basically 
is where Hercules ends up killing his family and that is a capital offense in ancient Greece and so he has to do 12 labors from his stepbrother that his stepbrother hates him and they're basically just tricks and when he does 12 labors every time he kills one of the creatures or brings back something that is part of the labor he keeps something and for example he has the hide of the lion to protect him he has the arrows made out of the blood of the hydra that it killed so i got heavily inspired by this and uh, for me each piece represents something that my model hunted and kept not as a trophy but as something that helps him fight and continue fighting once the story and the background of my model was done it was time for me to move on to make the actual position of how I wanted to make my model look like now this is going to be just a very quick and simple way of showing you how I basically came up with a rough graph as to how my model was going to end up looking at in the end I decided to place some places where I thought they made sense obviously the body was gonna go where the body goes the head was gonna go naturally where it goes but where I decided to branch off a little bit was actually the back part I already set up in my mind that the headpiece of the Bastelodon was going to be the shield so all I had to do was just set it up where it looked kind of natural in positioning as to how a shield will look like and afterwards it was just like lego pieces they were all gonna go where they were supposed to go now for the back part that's where i decided to branch off a little bit and uh, actually my rough craft did not end up looking how the final product was going to look like but it was the same concept I wanted to give it like if it had some sort of like wings or something oh uh, the story behind as to why I decided to put this was because this kind of was kind of my version of the lion um, king that uh, Hercules had gone this is what he uses to protect himself this is what is his uh, shield that's why he also has it as a shield is something that cannot be broken it cannot be pierced so that is why I decided to put that now for the head of the tree lord my story as to why I decided to put there is because for me it represented something spiritual something that my model was not used to so when he cut off the head of this tree lord he used he uses it now as some sort of like some sort of spiritual protection some sort of way to get into the mystical side that he's not connected to so he uses this as his spiritual voice as his way of seeing things differently he uses it as a mask or he uses this as some sort of protection bubble and so this is how my model ended up looking afterwards i continued into now starting the process of gluing everything together and also using my green stuff that you can see to be able to have to be able to hide those uh, pieces that are gonna be very very rough and as it's obviously how you can see here they don't perfectly fit to one another so I had to use a lot of green stuff to be able to hide those imperfections and to sort of sculpt my way into having a cohere cohesive piece a one piece now green stuff is a very creative tool that we have when we use kit bashing we use it to hide imperfections or just to fill up some gaps that uh, we have on the models itself um, here I wanted to use my green stuff to be able to marry these two pieces together because they are very rough very rough on the edges kind of like our relationship how it starts but 
once you get all of this together and all this is stickiness after a while it would harden and it will be good to go now here the way i decided to do it was slap it on like if it was some sort of like big belt because you know he's a big guy so he needs a big belt and i'm trying to just sculpt my way into making it sort of be able to make it cohesive as to how he ends up with a body like that with a lower body like that so it's basically all that it is you kind of just use your imagination to get rid of places that you don't like so it's just a trial and error and um, you can take it off it's gonna be a bit of a hassle to take it off but you can do it it just takes a little bit getting used to green some green stuff but highly recommend it if you want to do some kit bashing and it's some some nice stuff honestly it is very amazing stuff now after finishing marrying the two pieces together i went up ahead and now glued i use plastic glue or cement glue the, the cement glue and depending on what you want to use um to be able to just uh, be able to stick my arms in it but i know for a fact like i said before I was going to need a lot of uh, green stuff because uh, this scope, uh, as it is an amalgamation and just MacGyver Frankenstein kind of monster, um, I decided that I was going to need a lot of green stuff because uh, I needed to make this model look, you know, normal and it needed to look like it belonged together. And that's the thing about uh, kit bashing and doing what I'm doing. Um, when you do it yourself or people have done it for a long time, um, y'all know that uh, this is basically you being your own sculptor. You're trying to sculpt a model, trying to picture this in your head how you want it to end up looking. Afterwards, um, there's people who are way more advanced than I am, but you can go ahead and look at their videos or you can get inspired by them but basically um, also there's some people who actually sculpt designs into their green stuff uh, find like a milli putty that uh, apparently it's more easier to sculpt with but uh, here I was just using some green stuff and uh, it came out pretty great um, I decided to make this into the minotaur basically a minotaur kind of creature like I said, I wanted to give it its own background, its own story. This is not a Warhammer model per se, but it is a model that I used with all my Warhammer bits that I have. I decided to cut off a lot of stuff. I decided to, you know, like my guy were a lot of kit bashing, a lot of uh, gluing some pieces together, trying to make it look kind of nice, adding some personality to the models and that's the thing when it comes to kit bashing you know um it's the personality it's the reason why you do it is the reason why we do it is because you want to add a personal touch to it kind of like how i don't like to paint my armies in in a cohesive color because to me uh every soldier has an own personal touch to it yeah there are uniform colors uh, when it comes to like a base color being all over the uniform but other than that people will have torn uh, I don't know shirts stuff like that torn uniforms and uh, like I said at the end um, I decided to change some stuff uh, that's another thing when you do some kit bashing is do not be afraid to change your end your end product uh, do not be afraid to you know give it a second thought and just uh look for something else my idea in the beginning was to put the spikes uh, down but in the end i thought it looked more nicer if they looked up it looks a lot of spiky but i don't know to me it gives a little bit more personality when you see it from the front the sword i decided to make it into a sword not a hammer so i decided to cut off that hammer part and just add a sword that i had um and so do not be afraid to change what how you think it's gonna look and also as you're doing this you will be thinking about a painting scheme um, that is also very important when it comes to thinking about the story as to where it's come from 
Uh, I will not be painting this model here on camera. Uh, not yet. Uh, I'm still working on it because I want to work as well as for a base. I want to make it a custom base because I feel like being my first uh, all in bits uh, model, I feel like it deserves a little bit better. Uh, but that's just me. So like i said i used a lot of green stuff um, whatever you want to use you can use just do not be afraid to use whatever you have uh, you can use anything uh paint with everything that you have build with whatever thing you have honestly be inspired this hobby is amazing and in the end result you should come out with something that you like yourself you, that you find a personal goal, a personal happiness, an achievement that you made. And that's the thing about our hobby is that you get this sort of happy feeling when you see your end product be the way it looks. And when I finished this model, when I finished kit bashing it, I was happy with it. Uh, I got done with it and I primed it and this is how it looked primed. the end of the of this uh, kit bash before it's painted that I loved it and honestly you should try it yourself you should build your model and if you don't build your own bits model or if you don't kit bash you should try it you'll end up loving it because like I said this hobby is amazing and everything makes you happy once you're done with it and you see your end result so why not give it a shot